So yesterday's you were all working, I got a couple of questions about a problem um, that the answer was there is no solution for this problem. And I realized we had not done this graphic organizer, which is a very helpful one. I'd like you to open it up so you can see the whole inside for now. You will see there are three types of solutions. There is one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. I would like us to put a key at the top in the middle. A box equals an X. What do I mean by that? I would rewrite this equation. By the way, can you see this is a little scale that it's sitting on? I would rewrite this equation as 4x equals 2x plus 6. Talk at your table and see if you can determine where I got that equation from. We all good about where I got it from? Yeah. Normally when we look at an equation, we're looking to see, do I need to distribute? Do I need to combine like terms? I don't need to do either of those things. I also can't zero out that six because there's no whole number on the other side. What I can do is zero out the two X. You see where I'm looking there? Yeah. So let's zero out the two X. and we end up with 2x is equal to 6. What's my next step, everyone? Yeah, I want to get that invisible 1 here, so I have to divide by 2, and I end up with x equals 3. This is a pretty typical equation. Most of the equations that we work on in Algebra 1 end up with your variable equaling a number. That is one solution. Our variable is there, it equals 3. That means x is equal to 3. And here's where the notes really come in. There is only one solution. For this example, x can only equal 3. Nothing else would make this equation true. Let's move to no solution. These are not very common, but they happen. And there is at least one in your practice quiz. How would we write this? X plus three is equal to X plus five. Now, I'll be honest, I am a math teacher. I spend my days doing math problems. I can look at this already and go, huh, that's not gonna work. Imagine a number that you wanna put in for the X, any number, two, 10, 20, 100. Is it ever gonna be equal? If I put 10 here, I get 13. If I put 10 here, I get 15. Do they equal each other? No. 
You don't always notice them right away though. When you're working these, we just jump into what we normally do when we solve equations and we start trying to cancel things out and get rid of them, right? I'm going to do this up here and I'd like you to do it with me our normal way. Let's rewrite it. x plus 3 is equal to x plus 5. We would normally try to get rid of one of those numbers. We would try to zero out the 3 or the 5, wouldn't we? What do you guys want to zero out? Me too. On the left, what does that leave us with? X equals X plus two. Now I've got to get those X's together, don't I? So I'm going to subtract X from both sides and I get zero equals two. Not true. How did I get the zero? I took away x from both sides. That left me with nothing over here. This x also zeroed out, and we had the two left, and zero does not equal two. The other way I could have solved this is I could have just zeroed out the x to begin with. If I'm trying to zero out this x, I have to subtract it from both sides. That's also going to zero out this x, isn't it? And what does it leave us with? 3 equals 5. Does that work? No. no. And instead of a scale down here that's balanced, we would have 3 here and 5 here. Or up here we had 0 and 2. Or we could say 0 and 2. Either way, the left side is lighter than the right side, and they're not equal to each other. There is no solution because the two sides are not equal. Final possibility, infinite solutions. What do you think it means to have infinite solutions? Any number can work in that situation. Any number can work in that situation. So you're going to pick? So let's go down and write this. We have x plus 4 is equal to what? What do you notice about this compared to this one? Yeah, any number I put in for x here is going to be true. If I throw in 10, I get 14 equals 14. True. If I throw in 3, I get 7 equals 7. True. Any number I put in here for x is going to make it true. Do you see that? But you don't always see them when you first get them on your page. So let's go through how you would solve it. Typically, we would probably do the minus 4 first, wouldn't we? Yeah. x equals x. I really like that one because it's showing it doesn't matter what number I put in. Whatever I put in here, I also have to put in here, and it's going to be true. Another way to look at this. is to take the x away from both sides. And we would end up with 4 is equal to 4. Since it's true, it's infinite. 
And we also have no X's left anymore. Which is saying that when I reduce this down to what's left, whatever I put in for X would still keep this true. So, this is what we're going to write for our notes. X is equal to X infinite solutions because infinite solutions because any number for x will always equal itself. 